The power unit. Not a comic book superhero squad, but the beating heart that makes all the whirring and screaming and magic happen. Did you know that the F1 car's power unit is actually a series of different components, only one of which is actually an internal combustion engine? Let's take a closer look and see how this hybrid power unit works. Every F1 car is equipped with a 1.6 litre turbocharged internal combustion engine. This is basically a very, very, very advanced version of the engines used in regular road cars. The key difference is the amount of power generated by the F1 power unit. From a teeny tiny 1.6 litre unit, the car makes around 900 horsepower. The car makes around 900 horsepower from the turbocharged engine and electric motor combined, and that will be 1,000 horsepower in 2026. A standard road car engine will create around 180 horsepower. In other words, an F1 car contains an awful lot of horses. The turbo on an F1 hybrid power unit spins at up to 150,000 RPM. That's revolutions per minute, or a staggering 2,500 times every second, adding to the horsepower and generating huge power out of what is really a relatively small engine. As if all of that power wasn't enough, in addition to the engine and its turbo, an F1 car has a battery and an electric motor on board. This contributes 160 of that 900 horsepower when at maximum deployment. That battery is so clever, it even charges itself up. When a simple road car breaks, all the energy that gave it its speed is lost as heat. Not in an F1 car, some of that energy that would otherwise be lost is recovered by the electric motor and sent to the battery. See, F1 isn't all about the podiums and glory. All of these components work in unison, but the driver is still a key player here, strategically choosing when to max out the power from the electric motor and when to allow the system to recharge. In terms of how these components are assembled, teams can either develop their own system of engine, turbo and electric motor within rules set by the sport's governing body, the FIA, or they can purchase a fully functioning power unit, off the shelf if you will, from a power unit supplier. Surprisingly, the power units in F1 cars are about the same capacity as, say, a small family car. This relatively small 1.6 litre package is arranged in a V6 configuration. A major difference between F1's small turbocharged V6 and the more conventional engines is that it can rev. And believe me, these things can rev. Your road car might rev to 5,000 RPM if it's a diesel, or 7 to 9,000 RPM if it's petrol. By contrast, the F1 engine can rev all the way up to a whopping 15,000 RPM. That means that every single minute, the engine is going through a full cycle of motion 15,000 times. This helps account for the epic screaming sounds that F1 cars produce. And you can hear the difference yourself between a lower revving road car and an F1 car at full pelt. In total, drum roll please. This means that the F1 car powertrains help produce speeds of up to 230 miles an hour, 370 kilometers an hour. That's just a tinsy wincy bit faster than your standard 1.6 litre road car. So, where do you actually put an F1 power unit within the car? Well, the power unit is one of the heaviest components on an F1 car. And for the best handling characteristics, there should be as much weight in the middle as possible. And guess what? As a result, F1 cars are known as mid-engined. Genius, eh? All this means is that the heavy power unit is placed between the two axles, behind the driver, but as close to the middle of the car as possible. By placing heavier components as centrally and as low down as possible, the car will handle in a balanced, predictable way and give the driver the handling characteristics they need from a car racing at the pinnacle of motor racing. All of the power in that mid-engine setup is connected via the gearbox, drive shaft, and other components transferring that power to the rear wheels. And yes, you guessed it, this means an F1 car is rear-wheel drive. All of the power is delivered to the back wheels, and the mid-engine rear-wheel drive setup has become the powertrain layout preferred by many top-level motorsport series, as well as by many sports and supercar manufacturers worldwide. When you drive your road car, the engine becomes incredibly hot, like fire hot. So hot, in fact, that combustion engines need radiators to draw thermal energy away so that they don't overheat past their working temperature. Hundreds of degrees in temperature are generated as your engine burns fuel and all the components move around at high speed. 
Think of it like how a video game system gets hotter the longer it's on and the more frantically it's played. Internal combustion, which is the act of burning fuel inside cylinders to produce power, is not totally efficient. In fact, in most road cars, only around 35% of the stored energy in your fuel is actually converted into forward motion. The rest of that energy is simply lost into the ether, mainly as heat that gradually disappears. F1 engineers have drastically shifted the needle on improving this efficiency rate. Let's break that down a bit. Current F1 power units are over 50% efficient, meaning about half of the energy in the fuel ends up being used to propel the car forward. This jump in efficiency versus most road cars in just a few short years shows how Formula One is a development ground for technology that will ultimately benefit everyday customers as the technology trickles down to road car manufacturing. Previous generations of racing car were more inefficient still, and until relatively recently, a rate of efficiency of more than 30% for internal combustion racing cars was a rarity. With F1's current tech massively improving that figure, along with a switch to sustainable fuel in 2026, the sport will continue to bring about technological advances whose benefits go far beyond racing. As a direct result of F1's research and innovation, there will be more efficient engines installed in millions of cars every year. Pretty cool, huh? F1's Motor Generator Unit, or MGU, is a very clever bit of kit. You see, it's an electric motor that can add up to 160 horsepower to the wheels of the car when the throttle's applied and can also recharge the battery when the car's decelerating. So drivers can tactically change their driving style, depending on whether they need to use charge or save it. So how does it work? The battery is recharged kinetically, just like how dynamo-powered bike lights generate energy to power the light from the movement of the wheel. As a result, this system in an F1 car is known as the Motor Generator Unit Kinetic, or MGUK. The kinetic energy recovery works simply by spinning the electric motor under braking, effectively turning it into an electric generator. A magnet spinning within a coil creates resistance that helps to slow the car down while simultaneously becoming an electrical generator that harvests all that previously lost energy back into the battery or energy store. A fully charged battery, ready to be deployed and distribute that horsepower boost, means that next time the driver needs a burst of power, say when attempting an overtake, there's plenty of electric charge available to accelerate the car and attempt to gain that edge over their competitors. It might surprise you to learn that current F1 fuel isn't so different from the premium, higher octane option you find at most petrol stations. As part of F1 innovation, since 2022, F1 cars fuel has contained 10% ethanol, a renewable alcohol also present in many road car fuels to reduce the environmental impact. The ethanol part of the fuel is carbon neutral, only emitting back into the atmosphere the carbon dioxide that was absorbed by the fuel source during its production. The use of road-relevant fuel allows F1 teams and manufacturers to push the technical boundaries in power and efficiency, not just for the benefit of the F1 teams, but road users as well. That said, F1 fuels do vary from garage to garage. Different teams and manufacturers work with their fuel partners to optimize the fuel mix for their specific power unit requirements. The FIA tightly regulates this to ensure a level playing field, whilst allowing the teams to still innovate within the rules and seek a competitive advantage. From 2026, F1 will run all cars on fully sustainable fuel, a fuel created largely from waste material from the farming industry, household waste, or even capturing the carbon dioxide in the air. This fuel only releases the same amount of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere as it absorbed from the atmosphere during its growth delivering true, pure carbon neutrality. So, let's summarize. We've learned about the fuel that pumps into a Formula One car's V6 combustion engine, further aided by a turbocharger and the energy recovery MGU. They come together to generate around 900 horsepower into the rear wheels of the car, and all of that power and tech in a package not a whole lot bigger than the engine of a regular family road car. Impressive stuff.